got us over the line. Bought that. Yeah. When did you get him? Five. Oh. We only won by three. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember all that. I won the toss and uh, I said to uh, Spotty Bright that uh, they can uh, have a hit, we'll insert you. And, uh, and I remember him distinctly saying to me, well, that's the first mistake you've made for the game. And I thought myself at eight for 54, <laughs> I reckon it wasn't a bad call. One thing Ray came up to me when we were, I think we were about six for not many, and he said, do you think we should declare? <laughs> Which wasn't the, the dumbest thing I've heard before, but... Um Probably not a bad decision because according to the scorecard you were 6 for 24 so it might have been a bit premature. <laughs> yeah, very premature and um, I think I got us over the line. Did I make five runs there? No, because we won by three so it was a valuable five runs. <laughs> yeah, it was a very good score on that wicket because it did, especially with the new ball, it did do quite a lot. So um, yeah, it was seamed around for pretty much the whole game. So if anyone got over 50 they did a good job. So. Graffy will talk about his hundred in a minute. But, um... Spotty and uh, and Pistol actually batted really well. Um, we unfortunately, uh, I think Nary might have dropped one on White, so I might have dropped uh, Spotty early, which uh, meant that uh, we had a challenging score. And as Sakes had mentioned, the wicket for some reason, which was very un, uh, it w was Junction. abnormal for the junction to seem for three days. And I thought, really, after we uh, knocked them over for two hundred, if we batted half decent, we should be able to get them quite comfortably. But as it turned out, it was a bit of a uh, tough battle and, and went down to the wire. Well, there's ten first class players in that in the Richmond side. The only one that wasn't was Dutchie and he was a very good wicket keeper. He's probably just played in the wrong era to probably represent Victoria. But that was a, as a strong a side as you could get and you know I would always say that, that that side and the St Kilda side to be fair, if they played county cricket at that era they would have been a very strong county team. So um, it was it was very fortunate to be a group uh, in that group um, yeah, it was, it was a special time. Oh, look, it was a pretty tough deck. Like, you, you had a, a, a world-class um, attack in, in uh, Pistol and, and Sakes, and you had uh, Paul Quinn, who was a pretty handy trundler as well at grade level and, and played a couple of state games. And then you had uh, Ray Bright and Paul Jackson, so pretty handy uh, combination. And... Uh, and it was always a game where every time we looked as though we were going to get it on top, the wicket would fall and uh, and it just kept on going that way right through. We'd, we'd have a partnership together and someone would get out. And in the end, uh, Warney came in at the at the back end and uh, and I think I might have said, uh, don't play a shot, I'll get him. <laughs> and uh, so he did He did leave a few alone. For the first time he followed instructions, I think, for a while and uh, ever since. But uh, he left a few wide ones outside off stump from both Sakes and, and Pistol, which is the area he does like to play the shot in. Uh, there was a deep uh, point and a deep third man that would have been there waiting if he mishit it. But uh, he did abstain from playing a shot. And unfortunately, uh, as it turned out, I wish he had played one shot and might have got a nick for four and uh, we would have got up. But uh, as it turned out, uh, Sakes bowled an absolute um, playable one and uh, and I nicked it on the wrong side of the wicket though went caught down leg side and it allowed Richmond to win the flag and unfortunately from St Kilda's point of view we missed one that one that got away. Oh, I've got fond memories of um, Graffy making his hundred <laughs> standing in the middle of the pitch going like this when they still needed six or seven to win. I think you might and, be adding a little bit there, embellishing slightly there. Um, and then yeah I thought in my recollection I'm sure I nicked him outside edge <laughs> and kept it. Um, it's a long time ago so I can't remember but it might have been down like so but it was um, yeah it was a it was a great game for that reason where we every time we thought they were on top we'd get a wicket or two and then um, that we'd be back on the front foot and it sort of ebbed and flowed all along and sort of every run was so crucial and when Graffy said to Warney just don't play a shot he left three balls that as, as Graffy said it, he would have just usually slashed them for four or maybe got out caught but for him to leave them and he got a barrage of sledging from behind the wicket <laughs> as well. This young blonde guy that no one really had seen, I don't think he'd played many grade games at that stage, um, was copying a barrage from behind the wicket. Look, I would think it would be fair to say that I think both sides were pretty competitive and uh, and certainly uh, you know, anyone that played, you know, Richmond uh, back in those days was uh, a fearsome uh, side, a uh, very good record at making finals, maybe didn't win as many as what they should have in, have done really in a lot of ways, but uh, we're always very highly competitive and we had great games all the way through, so uh, any, you, know, you had Warren Whiteside in there as well and a uh, few few guys who liked to have a chirp from the St Kilda side of things and uh, and with Sakes and Spotty and uh, a couple of others there in the uh, in the Richmond side, I think it, it was an entertaining day out in the field, you certainly at the end you had 
had uh, sore ears because there was a fair bit happening, fair bit talked about. I think on the field. I, I just, I just loved those those games. I was it, there was a lot of respect for each other though and the teams. And I think after the game, you know, we we go in and have a beer and discuss the game in, in full. And it was no sort of hatred. It was just good, friendly cricket banter out in the middle. And because it was a high pressure game, it probably raised a little bit of a level. Some players really loved that, and obviously Graffy copped a lot in that game, but he stood up and got 100. You know, Paul Rifle's whole contribution in that game was amazing. A 70 and a 6 for, I think he ended up, or a 5 for that. That's a hell of a contribution. I think he took a couple of catches in the slips or gully as well, so uh, he stood up in a really big game, and you know, that's what some really good players seem to do. I can honestly <laughs> say to you that I get reminded of that by these blokes, by anyone from Richmond during that, that era, however I see, uh, for some reason it always gets back to that particular, uh, that last 10 minutes of that final, and uh, I know they enjoy every minute of it, but as Sake said earlier, uh, post-match in that game, we had one of the best post-match, even though we lost the first 10 minutes or so, we were a bit sad, uh, but after that we, uh, all the teams come together, both teams come together, and we got on, uh, we had a couple of uh, lemon lemonades, and uh, and we certainly had a great post match, even and it went for hours and hours and hours. To be quite honest, and uh, that's what it was all about. My memories of club cricket are so fond because of those reasons. I obviously went on then played in a premiership at Northcote as well, and you know those things that you just can have beers with the opposition all the time. It was just was the dumb thing. If you played away, you always went in for a beer. You know, my memories of club cricket are so fond, and I wish I could all have them again, but. Um, my body wouldn't let me do it now, I can assure you. Once upon a time, you used to be selected directly out of grade cricket, whereas nowadays it's, uh, there's a few other hurdles you've got to go through before you actually can get there. Um, however, grade cricket is still vitally important to develop young players, and and the more we can keep uh, older players around the game uh, is, is so vital, and hence the reason why you know the, the, the contribution from the ACA in relation to the Premier Cricket Program, I think, is vital, because if we can keep some older pros, so to speak, within the game in some capacity, I think it's going to be so vitally important to bring these young players through a lot quicker than maybe mature a lot quicker than what uh, they normally would. I'm sort of uh, involved out at Essendon, uh, help Joycey to look at the whole structure of the setup of their coaching, how they go about uh, their game plan, and certainly give some advice in relation to bowling and, and, and the game in general. And uh, and I love it. I think it's great to see these young kids come in, watch watch the young boys. I, I love the fact that they listen when you can actually have an influence at premier level to try and get a young boy, a couple of boys that come through the system and maybe get an opportunity to play higher in the state team, be it seconds or in the in the main team, and maybe progress even further. And I think, yeah, you've mentioned one guy there who we both uh, at that stage would never have thought he would have attained the heights that he did in Warney, uh, coming through our fourths originally as a batsman, opening batsman, who bowled a little bit and uh, then progressing right all the way through into the first and uh, and you know, the rest is history. Now, watching him develop as a young boy, uh, coming up from Mentone Grammar, I think was originally where he came from. Uh, I think he was on a scholarship for a couple of years. And uh, and I think watching him progress and to where he got to just shows you that you know, the development of, of, uh, of him was because he played amongst some really good players. He played in some really good cricket games that developed him quickly. He played against men, uh, which is so vitally important, I think, in, uh, in the development of a young player. I think it's fair to say that all the St Kilda guys who have actually played uh, um, first-class cricket have always wanted to come back and play Premier Cricket St Kilda, and, and Warney's one of them. Whenever, whenever he had a chance, he's always come back, and he loved to get in the change rooms, tell a few sporties, uh, go out and, uh, and really contribute towards uh, the team. They won a flag. He couldn't play, obviously, but they won one of their flags in the in 2000s that uh, he came along. I think he got 100 against Melbourne during that, that season. Uh, so uh, he's someone that uh, really loved the contest and he loved being around the, the, the club. And, uh, and I think you know it's it's a fantastic uh, force and Kilda Crew Club to be able to have uh, these these really good players wanting to keep playing, even though they're they're under a fair bit of stress to to perform and and to train heavily with the state team. Just on the on the club cricket system, there's a lot of players that miss out on the junior programs that still end up playing for their state and even their country. Mick Lewis, obviously, is, is one. Bobby Quiney is another. Myself, I didn't go through any system. Dirk Nannis didn't go through any system. Shane Harwood. And that those sort of players made their name in club cricket and then went on to play for their state or country, and nearly all of those did play for their country. So, you know, it's still a fantastic breeding ground for cricketers, and it gives guys that might maybe mature later or have played other sports and still want to have a go at playing state cricket or international cricket, it's still a way in for them. Uh, 
it's vitally important. I think it's really and vitally important that we've got really good coaches in that system. And in Victorian Premier Cricket, there are very good coaches. And the more the older players we can get back as well to sort of help out is vitally important as well.